God can breathe life into those dreams and just get you so excited, it's you can't contain it. You're having coffee with Conrad. Conrad Rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. I'm podcasting on a walk in the park. You can probably hear my feet going pitter-patter. I don't think pitter-patter is really good for footsteps, but you hear this part, right? So I'm walking on this dirt road, going to the park because it's sunny. I posted on Facebook the other day that people in Mississippi don't know what it's like to pray for rain. It rains here all the time. And when I when I mow my lawn, dude, it's like I gotta mow wet grass because it's gonna rain. You know, you just <laughs> you have this little reprieve of of uh daylight. So far that's been our experience. But it's green, it's lush, and praise God there's no mosquitoes bothering me i i I find that kind of highly strange but for some reason praise god mosquitoes haven't been bothering me but they have them deer flies and uh these deer flies are huge they look like little pterodactyls i mean they're just like and they don't they don't shoo away they're pretty awesomely ferocious like that. When you try to shoo them away, they just stay on your arm, and then they'll just take a big hunk of flesh out and almost lift you off, you know. When they leave, you've got to hit them. I mean, you've got, you can't take your hat off or a tassel like those uh, French Legion hats or whatever, the, you know, those tassels that they have like on graduation caps or whatever. You've got to hit those suckers, and then... Um, they will, you know, fly away. I mean, I don't think I've ever actually killed one by slapping it, but maybe injured it. Anyway, today I, I'm coming out to the park because I have an abundance of energy. Something happened, and this happens every once in a while. I think it's kind of like, uh, the, you know, Jesus says, ask, seek, and knock. Ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it will be given to you. There's a process of hunger. There's a hunger, like in the Sermon on the Mount, if you read it, you always notice that blessed are those that are lacking in this area, for they shall not, you know, they'll be filled later on. And this this lack creates us a, a, a situation for us to ask for relief. There's a pain point in our life. And we keep seeking the Lord for solution to that pain point. You know, it's ask. We ask the Lord, Lord, God, help me with this pain point. And then he causes you to seek. He'll give you dreams in the night. He'll give you visions. He'll give you little just intuition things. This is why we have a spiritual relationship with the biblical God. He'll give you stuff, and then you'll start seeking, and then you'll start reading the books, or you'll start meeting the people. You know, you just keep seeking, and then you'll find the answer. Sometimes the the puzzle pieces comes together in the night seasons. You know, he sings songs of deliverance over us in the night seasons. He blesses the beloved even in their sleep. He gives us keys to the kingdom that our carnal mind just kind of fights during the daytime because we believe it's impossible. You know, <laughs> you know how the carnal mind just kind of lacks faith and it it's a great breeding ground um, for doubt and unbelief. But this hunger drives us to ask. When we ask, we begin to seek. And then eventually, if we keep on seeking, I think the verb, I've heard from several people. I'm not a linguist. I don't understand 
all of that but they say you know maybe you could say ask and keep on asking seek and keep on seeking and knock and keep on knocking persistence you know how about the the guy with the importunity you know oh my friends from a long journey you know get out of bed give him some bread and he he says he won't answer for some reason but because of his importunity in other words his persistence got the solution he had a pain point he began to ask He sought his friend, and then he knocked until he got the answer. So I just had to have a big fight with one of them deer flies. You got to get out in the sun. Anyway, I guess it's not too smart to walk where there's 50,000 deer flies. But today, I'm going to tell you I'm excited. So let's say, for example, um, I battled with depression, panic attacks, stuff like that. And this is why I get kind of excited when I meet somebody with depression. I know that sounds weird, but it's like, hey, I've got the key. (laughs) You know, I got the key, man, and here it is. So um, depression can be really bad. And we like to wallow in it. You know, it's really weird. I don't know if you've ever been through it, but we like to wallow in depression. We start listening to the devil. We actually start believing in the lies of the devil, and he does plant these seeds, these thoughts in your head, and you just start agreeing with them down, 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 down into the bed till you put your pillow over your head for three days. I've been there. But one of the things that solves depression, and this is a kingdom key, is a vision. There's a scripture, Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. So where there's no vision, the people perish. And sometimes God, when when, is, when it says vision, it's not necessarily a plan. Let, 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 let's look at let's look at something else here. A vision. You know, we take the word supervisor. This is someone with supervision, and I like to look at that as a person that has, you know, let's say a business or whatever, and they're up above. They can they have a different vantage point than everybody else, than all the workers. So let's say. There's people chopping down in a forest. They're chopping down trees and they're going a certain direction. Well, they have a plan, right? That's the plan. I'm going to do this. This is A, B, and C is going to happen. These guys are going to do this. They've got a great plan and uh, they're doing a great job. But the guy with supervision sees the big picture and he shouts down to them and says, Look, we need to change direction. And the guys below don't see the vision. And um, they say, hey, well, we can't do that. We're making too much progress. So there's a difference between plan and a vision. And when God gives us, I'm telling you guys, when if you're depressed, if things do not rock, um, ask. Get, get importunistic, if that's a word, you know. Remember that passage in, in Scripture about importunity. Ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. But don't just sit on the couch. I mean, you know, God will bring you the books. God will show you the Scripture passages. God will bring people into your life. And this frustration, in a way, is a catalyst for success. It's the frustration that cre- it, it's the mo- it's necessities of mother of invention. Frustration creates success. And when I say success, I'm not thinking about success in the eyes of the world. I'm not thinking about being raised up in the eyes of men. I'm not thinking about, you know, that. I'm thinking about being effective in your ministry. The ministry that God's given to you. So when you seek God diligently... You know, he didn't say who to ask, but we know it's to ask the Lord. (laughs) You know, ask of me and I'll give to you, you know, that type of thing. And this frustration, this hunger, causes us to ask more persistently. 
then we seek, and then he starts giving us stuff. And I, I've seen it happen over and over again. And then here's this vision that we're talking about. Notice I talked about the difference between a vision and a plan. He doesn't say, without a plan, people perish. He says, without a vision, right? And then a year or two ago, um, the Lord gave me Habakkuk 2, too. You know, write the vision and make it plain, that he may run that readeth it. And it, it, it's the vision. Write the vision down. And why do we write these visions down? It's the same precept as remembering the Sabbath. It's the same thing. We have to keep putting this. You know how God says, put this word as frontlets before your eyes. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, Joshua. In it you shall meditate day and night. We have a tendency as human beings to forget things. And we have to keep this vision in front of us. Um, God talks in the Torah about you know, write these things on the doorposts of your house, (laughs) you know, we have to have little tricks to remind us. And that's why we put it on the doorposts in our our house, so that when we come home, oh, we remember that this is a godly home. When we leave, we remember by looking at these doorposts in our house that we got to be godly on the way out. It's like having these little tricks to remind us uh, the the uh, the boxes that they put between their eyes they actually put scripture in the boxes they took it extremely literal uh, but hey you know we learn from that praise god they did it because i learned from that amen so once you get this vision if you keep it as frontlets between your eyes if you keep it in your daily prayer journal, God will pave the way somehow. Um, because this vision is from God. I mean, you know when it's from God, right? If it's from God, it's something to get excited about, okay? Because it's going to come to pass. And, you know... Joseph, I keep thinking about Joseph. Joseph was given a vision <laughs> very early in his childhood. He was given dreams, you know, dreams and visions. And God didn't tell him how it's going to be implemented, right? He just said, you know, here's dream number one. The sheaves are going to bow to you, you know, your parents and your and the, your brothers, and then the sun and the moon and the stars, and then his father interprets it shall we indeed bow to you you know so they even gave him the interpretation and uh anyway so he has this vision and the vision happens to be more like a direction a compass heading you know lock onto this hold on to this and throughout your life god is going to bring things across your path uh the more proactive you are the the better i would assume right but sometimes God and God has this plan. You know, you may have to go through the pit. Okay? You may have to go through prison, prison and be falsely accused of rape. You know? That way that's going to definitely knock your ego down because it's all about Jesus. It's all about God. Right? But in all this, you have a vision. And this vision will get you up early and keep you up late and you're going to go Wow, this is this is exciting. And even through even though you're going through all of this, you have that vision or you will perish. Without a vision, the people perish. Can you imagine what Joseph would have would have happened to him if he had not that seed, that vision within him to carry him through the the pit, the prison to the palace. PIT by the way, prophet in training. Prophet in training. So, anyway, I want to encourage you today to, you know, just seek God. Your your pain point, that thing that's bothering you, will probably be the catalyst to your success in your ministry. Do you understand? The thing, when we get the beam out of our eye, our problem, when God gives us the keys of the kingdom to solve that beam out of our eye, we cast it out, go, oh, this is the key to cast this beam out of the eye, then we can see people with specs and get all excited. Hey, I can help you out. Praise God. Praise God. I went through this tough time, you know, 
And I'm sure, you know, I always wondered why Joseph, when he was standing before Pharaoh, he had um, a solution. Remember, let's for seven years, let's build these silos. Well, see, he managed Potiphar's house. God trained him up, man. And he was taking notes. <laughs> he, was, he was taking notes. His whole life was for that moment to deliver many people alive. Anyway, I want you to be excited. God bless you. Get a vision. You know, your pain point could be there's a solution in God. He's got keys to the kingdom. He gives us keys to the kingdom. Get excited about that. And uh, if this podcast has touched you, please consider sharing this with your friends and family on social media. Also, every time you rate or comment wherever you're listening to this podcast, somehow it drives the podcast up in the rankings and new people get to listen to it. So I'd appreciate it if you do that. And also, um, you might want to subscribe to the Inner Circle email. Uh, Inner Circle email, you get like, you know, I'll put dreams or some some prophetic words in the email and also some behind-the-scenes stuff so that... You know, you guys see that what we're doing more than just a podcast. You know, some of the the behind-the-scenes stuff, you know, when we go minister or whatever. You know, so you know a little bit more about me. Develop a relationship. And that way we can talk. God bless you. Thank you for being in my life. Till we meet again, dig deeper and go higher. Dig deeper, go higher at ComradeRocks.net.